if you had said to someone 25 years ago, we'd all be walking around with something that was like Captain Kirk's communicator, but much better, people would have thought you were crazy. And now, of course, we take it for granted that the phone, the internet, everything is just right there with you. We, in, in many ways, psychologically, uh, are cyborgs, right? The digital media that we work with and, and play with on a daily basis has become a sort of extra appendage already. And it's simply a matter of time before that then manifests itself as a technological apparatus. But the mental apparatus, the technological imaginary is there already with us. So I think we've seen the power of an interface to change the media industry. Mobile devices have changed the economics of the industry, they've changed the way content is produced. So if you look around the room tonight, you get the sense that there are other interface technologies which may in fact change the business yet again. How we get media, how we get information on a screen like this is totally different. So I, I think we still need to figure out what that looks like from a tech point of view. And then there's also all the societal cues. So for me, the future of human-computer interaction is to recognize that allowing space for me as an individual, not as a user, but as a participant, it really should be much more like conversation. I actually think that a future that would be great if we're heading towards is like the librarian in Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. It's this intelligent agent that is smart enough to figure out when you say, what was that thing I read? Um, and it had something to do with snails, but it was, I read it when I was on holiday last year, and it'll know what it was that you read and where to find it. Um, interfaces that are just much better at contextualizing what information you need when. Um, that's, that's the thing that I think we're going to get much better, and that can handle it in terms of natural language. One really powerful aspect is to just pick a sense, any sense, and just see how can you just trigger a sensation with a single sense alone. It's a really powerful idea and one we're not always used to exploring. Right now our interaction with uh, digital media is mostly through our eyes and a little bit less so uh, through our hands. We have more senses than that. We have a whole organ of skin, we have smell, we have taste. We'll be able to indicate with a, a subtle grrr that we want our clothes to puff up to add extra insulation um, so that we can actually keep warm. Um, this will be a natural communication that happens between our human movement and the interfaces within our clothing. It won't be called wearable technology, it'll just be called clothing. Give it another five or ten years and it will be perfectly normal. And once you get to the point where you're looking at somebody and you have a wearable, and it's perfectly normal to have information floating in front of you, at that point, it's not going to be so crazy to talk about sooner or later, it's going to be the smart contact lenses, and then it's going to be the smart lens implants, and then it might be the smart retinal implants. I mean, after all, when Lasix first came out, um, people thought, that's crazy. And if you go out far enough, people thought, laser death machines. Nobody thinks about it anymore. And then many of the things that we thought were central to computer-human interaction, we're going to have to throw out and reinvent because it's going to go back to a human-centered conversation. Interfaces actually have to fall into the background, have to become more natural, have to be something that we stop thinking about. And that's really what Future Interfaces is all about. How do we begin to stop thinking about interfaces? How do we begin to just start thinking about the experiences?